husband passed in March of this year. He and I studied in-depth afterlife journey. We, through research, developed particular devices. He made one for me to use specifically for him. And he gave this to me last Christmas before his death, and he died three months later. And he's just so prevalent here. I feel him. I, I feel him here. It's nice to be here. <laughs> oh. Oh. I thought you'd never call me. On tonight's episode, we're investigating a house known to be a portal. We've had men who investigated here thrown across the room. There were huge scratches down his leg. They were bloody. A picture was taken right here, and it is of the most horribly demonic face. This house was built on a portal. No! Oh, 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 what the? Is that you? Peter. He said Peter? He said Peter. How is he doing that? Look at this light. I'm gonna shit a brick. Can you move that again? <gasps> Who's down here? I'm so sorry. <laughs> On tonight's episode of The Paranormal Files, we're investigating a house known to be a portal. Welcome to the OP Pile Mansion here in Mineola, Texas. Is this the most haunted house in all of America? The OP Pile House is full of mystery and death, and the spirits here are always ready to speak. Almost every single room inside of this mansion is haunted by a different entity. There's an angry demonic man in the carriage house, children who died of scarlet fever in the upstairs, and even the owner's husband who makes an appearance from time to time. One of the previous owners of the house was scratched by what they believed to be a demonic entity, and it's rumored that this dark spirit still haunts the home. So join us tonight on this spiritual journey into the unknown. From here in Mineola, Texas, it's Colin Brown. Thank you guys for joining us tonight for another episode, and welcome to the Paranormal Files. Okay, everybody, today we are in Mineola, Texas, and we are going to an infamous haunted house here in this small Texas town. You guys ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, it's been a while since we did a proper haunted mansion, but this place, some of the stories of this building are really, really scary, and there's some, uh, there's some unexplained negative energy that the owner was telling us about that, uh, I'm excited to dive into, and there it is right there, actually. The OP Pile House. Wow. Take a look at that thing. Wow. It looks freaking creepy, doesn't it? Wow. It's a looks place haunted. I'm a hog. I'm a hog, nice. It looks... Victorian. Yeah, it just looks haunted, you know? <laughs> that looks so cool. It looks like a place that would have ghosts. Mm -hmm. yeah. But tonight we got yeah, yeah. Mary with us. Hi. We got Papa Spooks. Yo. We got Connor. <clears throat> Obviously, you got me. What do you say, guys? You want to head in and uh, see what these spirits have to say? Yeah. Yes. There's cats waiting for us. Yes. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of cats. Ooh. You know, cats are omen. Oh, there's the, Ooh. They're a bad a omen. A bad omen. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm like, <laughs> what? Cats? All right, guys, let's do this. Right. Okay. This place was creepy looking. I mean, it reminds me almost of the Haunted Mansion. Uh, and I just really could not wait to go inside and check this place out. This place looks crazy. And just wait until you see the inside of this house. The OP Pile house or mansion definitely has the look of a creepy haunted mansion. I mean, it's picture perfect. It's got the turret up top. It's got outdoor window shutters. It's got, you know, just spooky decorations and that kind of perfect amount of deterioration to make a location spooky. I know that when we rolled up that day, I was immediately excited because you can tell how haunted a place is going to be literally sometimes just by how it looks on the outside. And this house, I mean, you guys can probably tell from the drone footage, this house really radiates a certain energy. And I mean, if you would have asked me what I thought the interior looked like before we went in, I would have imagined a completely different thing. So in this tour that we're about to get from the homeowner, Heidi, I think you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised. And this investigation turned out to be one of our deepest that we've ever done. 
and really poses some questions about the afterlife and what it means. I mean, I get chills thinking about some of the things that happened during this investigation. It wasn't jump scare, scary, demonic, evil, but it was so, so intelligent that it was honestly a bit scarier than being jump scared. Um, it made me question a lot. But before we get into all of that, let's take a tour. Hello, I'm Heidi Hoke, and we're at O.P. Pyle House, historical property, built in 1903. We're gonna start here at the porch. Uh, before I get started here on the porch, we want to put notice on the uh, historical markers which were placed at the house uh, in the early 80s. The markers discern the birthplace of Ima Hogg, the home of O.P. Pyle, and basically the general historic relevance of the two acres of property here. Starting here at the big wraparound porch, we have our first paranormal site. We have had numerous figures and animated type entities seen numerous times. This right here is the point of activity. And I think throughout uh, history, as we go along and learn of the history, we'll see that there's really no specific thing about the porch. It's the land, it's about the land because the land holds so much wonderful, wonderful, rich opportunities of historical relevance. We see a tall figure, uh, about seven feet tall, kind of a cross between um, a slim, dark, shadowy figure. That, that figure happens a lot. And it's been seen through this window. It's been seen through the front door. And also dogs have seen it many, many times, growling at it very fiercely. We have had numerous sightings of animated figures in the yard. We know that there was at least one death since the um, house was built here in the front yard. But more than that, the property site is on a two block area where about approximately 600 unmarked graves have been noted. This is due to the railroads that came in when they used slave labor from the prisons and the circumstances, the uh, conditions were very violent, very, very hard, and there was quite a few deaths. Through that process, people who were deceased were just simply buried where they died. So those graves went unmar uh, unmarked. So let's go in the front door. Okay, 600 graves? 600 is what they've they've calculated. So here in the here in the foyer, um, we have one particular past resident that um, likes to plant herself right here and she likes to look through the window as people knock on the door and not answer the door. That's her favorite thing. So there's been many, many people who have come through knocking on the door wondering why the woman standing here did not answer the door and they've told me Heidi we were there there was a woman there by the door and she wouldn't answer what's the deal well there was nobody home I was in Dallas That's you know crazy. Wow. so that that does happen and we've had n numerous people report that coming through here is the library and um, this is a really oh interesting God, room. This, <laughs> this is an interesting room. This was the library of Mr. Thorpe, James Thorpe, and he was a um, he was a lawyer. He was uh, kind of a protege of O. P. Pyle. They were not in the same um, time frame, but they were about a generation um, apart. Uh, but they had had dealings with each other in the um, law profession here in Mineola. These books, really on the top here, are Mr. Tharp's law library that we found um, just decaying in the old garage that was out back when we bought the house in 1972. 
did our best to restore them, put them in here. But we know that this was his workroom. And this was also the room that he died in. Uh, we know that his desk was here, and we have his desk in another part of the house. We know that he sat here, and we know that he has been seen many times here as a, as a figure, as a um, spirit figure. He has a tendency to throw things in here. Um, he, he does throw things. Um, he will throw pictures. He has said through mediums that he does not like the moving black box in his work area because it is used for folly and he does not appreciate anything in here that is used for anything other than study and work. So that's interesting. He's, he's, he's noted this. Uh, he does not like television. No, no. So um, this is uh, historic in that this was a crochet dress that my mother made for me uh, for my wedding. And she hand crocheted it. Um, I have it up for display. She also is re very prevalent in her, her presence here in the house. She passed in uh, 2015 and she's since then certainly had her mark here in the house. And she is, uh, she's identified many, many times in the EVPs and a, a, lot, of, a lot of the paranormal um, investigations. She will tell her story about her death. She will tell her story about how, how she experienced um, her time in the hospital prior to her death. She expresses her love for the property and for the house, and she calls my name quite frequently. So that's this part. Um, is that you? This is me. Wow, cool. that is so cool. That's me. Yeah. I mean, I was 19. Wow. Yeah. This yeah. is like I'm one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. Thank you. Like, Thank you, you did a really good job with this. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, if you smell if you smell that, that is paranormal. I don't have anything like that. Now the pipe, the cigar would have been a pipe. It would have been Mr. Tharp. So as we're here, where his his place is, he doesn't like his place muddled with, and he makes him, himself known, and it's in the form of a cigar. Kind of a Cuban cigar. Yeah, it doesn't have a sweet tobacco smell yeah. to me. It's more yeah. of a pungent. It's pungent. That would be OP Pile. The sweet cherry tobacco um, would be Tharp. You just smelled that Tharp. just now? Yeah, I've been so smelling OP, see, OP a pungent. OP Pile would be equally as, as prevalent, you know. Now, I'm smelling a cherry. The two could be fused, but yeah, both of them, right. and, and you'll also smell a real rank Marlboro kind of n nasty cigarette smoke. And that are the railroad men that stayed here. Wow. So we have diff three different kinds of smokes that, that you will smell. Um, yeah, the, um, both O.P. Pyle and Mr. Thorpe, they were both gen gentlemen. And and very proper. I would, I would, I would just guess from the personalities that Mr. Pyle would have smoked. I don't know. You know, I may be wrong. It it could be opposite. I don't know. But but I do know that we do have cherry. I don't know how prevalent cherry tobacco was back in the turn of the century. Um, but but right now I'm smelling cherry. Yeah, I think you're right. I keep talking, no. but I kind of get a back and forth kind of thing. I do too. They're they're both. When you say that. Yeah, I'm I'm smelling cherry yeah. now, and they're and both I, hanging out they're both hanging out in smoking. here. Yeah, <laughs> right. They they could be. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. We yeah. don't know. We don't know, and we don't know how how much interaction the different generations of <coughs> residents share after after, you know, uh, you know, this, so, after death. Um, another person that is very prominent in this room that I must mention 
Um, my husband passed in March of this year, and this was one of his favorite rooms as well. Um, in the bookcase, you will see different items that look a little bit futuristic. Um, he was a medical engineer, very gifted engineer, and he loved 3D printing, and he had been 3D printing before people knew what 3D printing was. And he and I together um, studied in-depth um, afterlife um, journey. Um, I had a near-death experience which, which promoted or began the study of afterlife, and he became very interested in it. We, uh, through research, developed particular devices that could be used for astral projection and for an astral after near-death experience without the near-death, the out-of-body travel. And he would make these, we would use them, we had um, uh, workshops, metaphysical wor workshops of the like. I still use them. Um, he made one for me to use specifically and only f for him for contacting me. Really? So that's in the dining room. Wow. So um, he said, you know, and, and he gave this to me last Christmas before his death. I didn't know he was planning this, but evidently he did know. And he made the uh, device for me. And it was it was kind of bittersweet to receive it. How, 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 do, how do you do that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but he, he gifted this to me to communicate to me after his death, and he died three months later. Wow. So he had some inclination of what, what was up. What was yeah. to, so that's that. And so those are just played, and he's just so prevalent here. I feel him. I love him. I feel so him cool. here. I, love him. I, I just, I feel him here. So that's somewhat of a comfort, you know. Oh, so we go into the parlor. The parlor were, was the ladies' room. It was indeed the ladies' room. It was where the ladies were shooed off to talk about their um, superficial things of life, while the men talked about the important stuff of life in the, in the dining room and smoked and um, strategized in political and legal issues. Um, O.P. Pyle and Mr. Tharp, they were both very prevalent in politics, law. Um, Mr. Uh, Tharp headed the um, Farmers Union. There's so many, uh, he, he was advocate, he was, uh, they were both social advocates. And um, so, they did, they did a lot of planning and strategizing. They did a lot of work in, in the dining room. So that was a very prevalent place of, of, of social strategy. And then the women would stay here, play organ, play the piano, do whatever, talk, and um, have their time in here. This is one of the devices that was made by uh, a very dear friend of ours when David was alive. And um, this too is a, it's an astral device. It's an astral device. And so it, it's one of my favorites. I just absolutely, David didn't make it, but my favorite artist did make it. And I'm so happy to be able to have it in here. It seems to be a vortex. It seems to attract the passage between levels, if you will. We have done the camera. SLS? SLS, mm -hmm. thank you. The SLS, I, I understand that SLS can try to make figures where they don't exist. We all kind of understand that. I don't know what that is. The dogs are outside. Um, we, we know that. However, we have mm -hmm. done SLS on this we have seen figures. No, there's nobody outside. No. Um, we have seen figures literally born out between these prongs, come out and stand. Now that doesn't happen 
that that can be faked out in an SLS. That I mean, an SLS camera doesn't create that kind of animation, but it it was just like a birth. The the backside coming out, and then and then flourishing out, and then coming out into all fours, and then beginning to dance. You've seen that out of that. So what does that thing? What like what's the intended use? To contact. But, but I mean, how do, you, how do you use Literally. it? Literally, okay. Because I'm um, so interested. This this is this I I'm a ch I, I channel okay I channel. It's 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 just a gift that that has been given to me after since my near death experience. But what you will do is you can hold your hands at a 45 degree angle, and there is a particular time of meditation. Um, meditation protocol. I don't need it. I can just usually just meditate. And if you stand here long enough, it doesn't really take long. I'm already feeling it right now. You'll feel an electrical charge and you'll feel an electrical interaction between your hands and the coils of the copper. And what, what, here's the whole theory. Here's the scientific theory is the copper wire interacts with the electrical charge in the body and it creates something like a crystal radio and as you you use it through your hands your electrical passages and it it's the palms um, you're able then to interact with the DN, the DMT within your brain we all have DMT Every living organism has DMT. That is the spiritual molecule that connects us. That 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 interaction will be will allow you then to have different experiences. Nobody has the same experience. Some people just see light. Some people just um, see, you know, d different scenes, nature scenes. Every everybody's experience is different. There's not one particular um, experience that is that that is um, suggested. Um, with me, I am able to channel ascended masters, and and sometimes people don't get anything, and that's okay too. Um, but we've noticed that those that have had near death experiences have a higher a higher level of experience than those that have not. There's a sensitivity that happens when your heart stops and then it restarts. There's something different that happens in the brain. That's my experience. Something happens differently in the brain that, um, that creates a higher level of a little hypersensitivity. This is what we have. Okay, this is neat too. Um, we know that there's entities out on the porch because we see them looking in. Many times when we're we're d doing investigations. We'll see um, their faces, just different, different faces. So that's what's going on in here. Wow. That's crazy. And I'm, I and I'm saw the light right here in this window just get blocked off like multiple times when we were talking. We, mm. I, you saw the property, um, Casey, who was working out here on the stream. He was out here just tonight. And he said he was talking to one of our dogs out here, Monty, and you know, Monty was just going on, you know, real happy. And Monty stopped, just suddenly looked over behind the carriage house and began to get this mean, mean kudo, um, cujo, he said, cujo kind of growl. And I know there's entities behind that because we've, we know the history behind that. But there's a lot of stuff lurking behind the behind the carriage house, and the dogs always pick it up. Um, my dog, Cirrus, frequently will just stop and look out into space and growl and carry on. So, um, but we think this could be a, a portal because, I don't know, it has, it has some relevance, some spiritual relevance. Dining room, we've kind of been through that. Um, I can't really say that this is a highly active place. And as soon as I say that, I'll be proven wrong. Um, but, th but there was just a lot, of, a lot of activity of legal and political strategy here. Um, this is the device that my husband made for me and all of his 
all of his devices that he did, and he, so we talk. Um, these were some. See, you can see the copper, and he put the, um, that's actually a meteor. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Ark of so the Covenant. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know this for sure, but I suspect that Susie Pyle, the wife of Opie Pyle, I suspect that she had a private practice of spiritualism. I don't know that for sure, and, and it may not be fair to the family for me to even suggest that, but I, I just, I, I feel that she did because there was a beautiful, there, there seems to be a beautiful foundation of spiritual sensitivity in this house, and not, not, of, not of evil, just a spiritual sensitivity. It seems to be a place where there is open communication, and I think those who are um, accepting of open communication are drawn here. I, I don't think that's by accident. Uh, so we have that. It, um, let's, let's go on. A little maid is seen running across here, a little teenage black cook maid, about this tall, cute little petite woman is seen running across here all, very frequently, just in a scurry, trying to get dinner on, you know. <laughs> That's, um, this piece, we believe, there's an attachment to this. This really has nothing to do with the house, but we feel there is an attachment to this. We often see a woman um, who I know, I, I, I've met her, I know who this belonged to, and I met her probably about 40 years ago, and she was, you know, she, she was um, deceased, but this belonged to her, and she is seen just with her hands posed right here on this, looking out, and I, I believe it's just, it's, a, it's an attachment. This is Susie Pyle. This was the wife of O.P. Pyle, who built the house. And, um, let's see, this is O.P. Pyle. Oh, wow. This is the house when it was built. And this was a pen and ink done by um, Patty Hurst's aunt, Ms. Hurst, and she, um, uh, she's signed it there. So, these stairs are actually on they actually go up oh. into the wall. Whoa. So, so the architecture was not compromised. We didn't want the architecture to be compromised by a staircase that is obviously awkwardly in the way. <laughs> so, but we go up there all the time, so it's really hard to keep it up and down. I just keep it down all the time. It, it, it's so hard to clean, but we're gonna go up there next, because that's right. really active. That's so cool. <laughs> I have ne truly never seen something like that. Isn't that fun? That's that's awesome. Awesome. Thank my husband for that. He engineered that. He said, we can make that, that work. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just a little hole about like this. You could be barely get up. This is highly haunted. This, this bathroom is so darn haunted. Um, we were doing some work in it, trying to upgrade it. There was no windows, um, no um, shades on the window. My daughter came in and she was probably about 19 at the time. Um, so she didn't have any drapes. So she decided she would take a shower in the dark. So she came in here and she took a shower and she was washing her hair. And about midway through her shower, she came comes running out profane language I had never heard from my daughter before, <laughs> wrapped in a towel and she was crying. And um, after I had settled her down, she said, she reported that she was washing her hair and a third hand came up to the back of her hair and began to wash it like this. Mm. So she had three hands going and it just, and I've, I've had other people to say, this is a creepy, creepy bathroom. You know what, you know, so I've tried to make it 
as inviting as I can, but I can't. I can't do anything more. <laughs> you know, it's just creepy. What do you know? You know. Yeah, that's a creepy story. It's just creepy. Yeah. Oh, oh. This is the bunny room. We call it the bunny room. Now, this has happened. This has happened. I. This happened a couple of days ago. It's not new to me, but this <laughs> falls. I don't know. We have just oftentimes this is one light? of the uh, yeah. yeah this happens this kind of thing just happens all the time and it's it's you know it, you kind of begin to just take it in stride but um, see this this has been bent down I don't know where I don't know where the nail went to that but this is not unusual we so, well, we have. That you're just finding just, that right now? I'm not just finding it. I knew this for about two, three days, but I just came in here to clean wow. after my partner had been in here and and somebody was mad about him being in here. So I don't know, it could have been my mother. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, so we just have these things. So this is a this is an interesting room. It's a bunny room. We've always had it the bunny room. I don't know why bunnies got involved in this but but about a year ago it dawned on me why it may be this was the room where four little children were um, quarantined during scarlet fever and two of them passed and we have seen full body apparitions looking at themselves in that mirror of children we know that there were four, maybe four in here at one time during that time. That was so sad. And um, that was that would have been uh, the Pyle family. And I know that they did lose some children to scarlet fever. Now, what's the bunny connection? I didn't realize this until I went through my books that I had given to the children. The Velveteen Rabbit was written in that same time period, that was the story of a little child that had scarlet fever and was not able to play with the rabbit because of the fear of exposure of scarlet fever to other children and family. When I made that connection, these bunnies, and I put the book in the room, I had a copy, put it in the room, these bunnies began to, to be like, tossed off of that that shelf wow. so there was some kind of some kind of a connection between the velveteen rabbit and the scarlet fever in this room and I'm really glad to have made that connection because I, I believe there's something to that um, it was in the same time period so that would have been in 1905 6 7 OP Pyle passed quite soon after the house was built and left Susie Pyle to, with her children, and she had to she had to sell the house. She had no means of of um, financial security, so she did have to sell the house to be able to move and take care of her children. Um, and that's when the Kitchens bought the house. They were here for about two years, and then they sold the house to the Tharps. Kitchens, you'll know, you'll know, Kitchens um, restaurant downtown is the same family. Okay. This is, this is the Black Rose. This is kind of my office. And um, this, I, I don't believe there would be anything specific. However, I suspect that probably David would make a presence known in this room. This was where he slept and where he passed. And um, it, it would be a place that he would be prevalent, possibly besides the library. Um, I don't know of anything notable about this, simply because no one before you all have been allowed to investigate it. It's never been investigated. So I would be very happy for you to investigate it simply because I'd like to know what what's here. You know, I, I really would like to know what's here. When Mr. Tharp died, Ms. Tharp was left to do whatever she can. The women, 
they just had no financial security. And um, the widows just had such hardship. So she took the carriage house where the horses were kept, made those apartments, and then she, um, she rented them out, and then she rented out all the rooms in the house. So that's when the, the uh, railroad men began to come in, and they would go in and out, in and out. We don't know who. We know there was some, um, some tie to Bonnie and Clyde. They were here some time, and they did rent, and there's been EVPs that suggested that there was a, a presence of Clyde here. Um, but there, each room has a particular personality of that, that, that suggests railroad activity, railroad men. Um, so that's, that's what we have here. This is my mother's room. This has all of her, her stuff in it. Um, she loved this room. The notable thing about this is that a picture was taken. It was completely dark. A, com a picture was taken right here, and it is of very obviously the most horribly disturbing demonic face I have ever seen in my life. And I have that photograph, and I'll be happy to share that with you. But it is disturbing, very disturbing. And I, I don't know anything about that, and I don't even want to you know, use the D word, it's just, that's what it look, it looks like. And it, it's, I mean, how can you avoid, I mean, how can you deny what it looks like? So, um, what, I'll share that with you. What was the context of when the photo was taken? They were just doing really, but they weren't like summoning or doing anything weird. They were just doing very light, um, generic EVPs. And we had one of the members just to just flash, you know, pictures all the time. And he picked up a lot of things um, in mirrors and the like. But over this door was where he, he, he flashed just into the dark. And it came up. And it, 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 it's just too obvious, you know, to, to ignore. It, it was disturbing. But other than that, we, we, you know, all of these rooms are active in some way. There's names and, you know, and, and activity, you know, things being thrown around all the time. But this seems to be probably one of the more peaceful rooms aside from that, that photograph. Um, but, yeah. This, we know, is a railroad guy's room because we've seen him right here in this corner. And he's got, he's got the full dress, the full thing going on. He was definitely working on the train. He was an on the, on the train kind of a. This has that pungent smell. It does, doesn't it? Cigarettes. Yeah, it does. I'm, I'm smelling it now. It's I'm like smelling it now. Mm -hmm. It does. I'm smelling it. Oh, it's, yeah. It's not nearly as nice to smell. No, it's not. It's not the nice cherry stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's like. Winston or Marlboro mm -hmm. kind of stuff, you know, the un, unfiltered kind of, yeah. Um, so that's this room. The only thing notable about this is the floor. This was Miss Thorpe's sewing room, and nobody cared that Miss Thorpe's sewing room was level. They just didn't care. They threw up a place for her to have her sewing machine, and they didn't care whether the floor was level. So this is not disrepair of the house. It's just that the room was not leveled when it was built on. It was a build on. This was the the outer door to the... There's a little boy that's seen looking out the window from outside in. A little boy's face looking out the window here. So, let's go upstairs to the belfry. metaphysical room it's just it it decorated itself there was no plan no order 
it was just stuff that David liked and we had and that was donated and that we didn't know what to do with it. And it just pulled itself together, I think, really nicely. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly it looks like it the just set happened, of a movie. you know. Uh, so we um, we have yoga here. We have um, workshops. We have classes. We have um, we, have a, we do a lot of holistic health related um, activities here: uh, breathing, um, body work, um, you know, holistic stuff. You you notice e that ET is my, yeah. My <laughs> husband was definitely into it, and. Um, Oh, he made some of this stuff, you know, he made he made these guns. He he was just into all the steampunk. He loved steampunk. And it was it was just part of what he did. This gun thing is super cool. <laughs> this is crazy. Now this is like this clown is like a pendulum. And I found this the other day and I couldn't resist it. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> Bring in the clown. So so anyway, this clown is like a pendulum. And when there is spiritual activity, he will just start swinging on his own. And we don't know who it is. We don't know who's doing it. Like you, you can see like now, when, when the music started, he started swinging. If you'll notice he's swinging. Yeah. Now that, you know, obviously that that, that could be air, wind, we get it. It can be debunked. But sometimes people say, I swear, it was still, it was still, there was no air. There was nothing that could be promoting this, this movement, yet he does. Now, he, he will also move on command, like if you ask a question or, or, or doing EVPs or you need some, some kind of um, confirmation, you know, um, he will give confirmation to certain spiritual. He's cute. Yeah, he is cute. He is cute. <laughs> this is just a room that my kids love to come on Christmas and, and holidays, and, and we just like to well, like to live in it. This, I believe, has an attachment. Um, I'm not convinced that this is clear. We try to clear things, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Things just filter in. Uh, this corner is really active, and what we, this area is really active, and I'm sure because of the metaphysical objects here. But we find um, an orange ball, like a like an orb. It's about this big, that surfaces in and out. Um, I've also seen that same that same entity right over here. And that's been photographed. I've seen it right here. So, and, and again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the space. It could be the land. We just don't know. Now, I haven't talked a lot about the different levels of history, but I, I would like to do that. So beginning with Native American history, we know that on this area of land, we can document at least one of three tribes referred to as the raccoon people. And they revered raccoons. They loved the raccoons. And I'm sure they used the personality of the raccoon to mimic strategy, life skill strategies of, of cleverness and, and resourcefulness, you know. We cannot keep raccoons out of this attic. Now, I know that people have raccoons. I know East Texas is full of raccoons. But raccoons are drawn to this space. We, we, I, I can't tell you how hard it is to keep the raccoons from finding some way to break into this particular space. I don't, I don't know if that has a connection to the Indians that, that, that were on this land, the raccoon people, but there, there's, there's something energetic there. Um, so raccoon, this is almost like a raccoon house here. But there's just, there's a lot of activity up here. Secondarily, another story that we have been able to document by name and year. There was um, a young man named David Aiken who went to 
fight in the Civil War. He did not agree with the war. He didn't like either side. He felt like there was just, it was unnecessary um, torture and, and, and violence. He, he just didn't want to have anything to do with it, but he had to go anyway. So he, he, he fought uh, in Virginia, but after the war was over, he was deeply traumatized. PTSD had, had, had suffered through horrible, horrible combat um, experiences. He came to East Texas and he landed here on this property before the house was built. He befriended a little lady who lived in a very small house that is right at the corner of our property. He befriended her, she befriended him, he took care of her and protected her. She cooked and protected him and helped him through <clears throat> his, his trauma. He lived in a little chicken house behind her house. They lived in separate quarters. They were simply a platonic family. And when she died, he died very, very soon after. Through a medium, he has told his story that he, when he died, he went through a period of complete darkness. No heaven, no hell, just a, a purgatory type, type time of darkness, in which time he woke, and when he woke, the house had been built. Now, he, to this day, we still feel his presence. He makes his presence known as a protector of the land. As he protected the little lady, he now protects the land. We can hear him, we can hear many times boots going back and forth right over here. This is where the boots are. They're many times. And you'll hear them, you can almost, you can always hear them from the from the downstairs where my library was, mm -hmm. the bed with the library with all the books. You can hear it all here. And you'll just hear really strong, heavy boots going back and forth and back and forth. And it it will go on for hours. You can't sleep. Mm -hmm. It will go on for hours. And he has identified himself as being that boot activity just simply standing guard. He says that he, um, he's able to, to guard the home spiritually, and that is how he sees himself and his contribution to the land, is being able to, to keep out the constant and permanent prevalence of negative energy. He, he literally scares it away. Now, I was in the library one day, one night. I was nursing a migraine and I was in so I was in so much pain. And I was awake all night long. And as I was laying there, I distinctly heard what I I could what sounded like to me hooves. I hate to say that. Okay, but they were, they were hooves. They sounded like goat hooves. They were just brrrup, 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 all the way up the wall into that library room where I, where I mentioned. That morning, I went in to bring my husband David some coffee. And when he, he, he opened the covers to get out of the bed, there were huge scratches down his leg. Huge, huge scratches. They were bloody. They had bled into the bed sheets. And he said, I don't know what that is. I never felt it. And that was within about a t an hour to an hour and a half time slot of when I heard those hooves go up that same wall. Um, we don't know about that. We don't, we, you know, we don't know anything more than that. It's just an experience. And so all you can do is just come to conclusions that are the most sensible. Um, it wasn't a cat, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a cat. You know, you just don't, you don't miss something like that. But, but, but evidently whatever it was, it, 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 
it came through without him waking up or without him knowing that it ever happened. So, um, so David Aiken, he, he protects this place. He's, he, he runs out the stuff that shouldn't be here. So the railroads were coming in and they used um, slave labor from the jails to build the railroads. There was very little um, respect for the life at that time. They were just... What was that? Big bang. That was loud. You're, you're going to get a lot of activity here. <laughs> wow. It's That's like someone slapped the wood. Yeah, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah, okay, that's well. what it said. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Wow. Um, so they didn't care. I just saw a shadow. I just saw a shadow right here. It went, um, it was just for a fleeting second right through here. Just right through here. You may get a lot of activity right here. So they have little regard for life. So that's how the 600 um, some odd uh, graves are within a, probably a two block period, a two block location from here to Patton Street over to the highway where the loop is. That, that, that block of land, it's about three blocks square. And that's where all of that is. One of the prison guards, his name was J. H. Randall. It's been documented that he was one of the worst, most highly, highly regarded as being probably one of the most, the harshest, the meanest, the most vindictive of the guards that worked that project. There were many people in the town that tried to get him lawfully arrested for the the cruelty that that he had he had he had um, given out to the workers, um, he never got in trouble for it. He just he went through. Somebody finally killed him. To relate that to what our paranormal activity is here, there is a figure who we think is the the a manifestation of the picture that we got in the blue room of. You know, the picture I told you about. We, we believe that's him. He refers to himself as Bosman. Um, there's, been, there's been television shows that, that have gone through the carriage house and re recorded all of that activity. Now, Bosman was a common term that prisoners used to refer to the guards. It would be not only a self-associated name, but a name that, that, that the slaves would have also referred to him as. And he hangs out in the carriage room. He will swipe the backs of women. He does not like women. He abuses women. He is mean. And he is vindictive and he is violent. We've had people uh, we've had men who investigated here. We've had them thrown across the room. We've had people that investigated that would not, that left, that would not go any further in their investigations. He's, he's mean and nasty, and he loves to intimidate. And you're welcome to investigate that if you would like to do that. His name's Bosman. He refers to himself as Bosman, and he likes attention. But we really try not to stir him up but it's really hard not to invest it's hard to investigate that area and him not 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 come because he loves the attention so jh randall bosman he's over in the carriage house my boss yes it's a slang boss man and he refers to himself as boss B O Z, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. It's a it's a it's a slang term for you know the head honcho, and so um, so boss or boss, you can you can um, you can call him in if you want to. He will 
he he will probably come. We get a lot of activity in those in that carriage house. A awesome. lot of activity. Apparitions, slamming doors, um, shadow figures. Behind the carriage house was a speakeasy. It was illegal and it was shut down during pro prohibition, but it seems that there was always activity there anyway. And the law was usually a part of it, so they just turned their head and let it happen. <laughs> and so we have a lot of activity behind those, that carriage house between here and the, and the Dairy Queen parking lot. There might be too light, maybe too much activity, I don't know. But there's, you know, there where the dogs are, there, there's a lot of activity there. But you're welcome to investigate the carriage house as well. Oh, for sure. Okay. That's, um, that's where I do a lot of my, of my you know, my, my consultation and my work and stuff. So, but you're welcome to go up there as you, as you want to. Awesome. Was there somebody, like, buried somewhere on the property that I read about online? Yes. There's four people. <clears throat> my cousin, my father, my mother, and my former husband are all, their, their cremains are all here on the property. Wow. Are you going to be? I will be, yes. That's awesome. I will be. I will join my husband there. I sure will. So, their own language. I guess I have three questions. Okay. One, um, do you ever feel like with the amount of kind of like calling out you guys and you do here, you ever get negative stuff that comes through? I don't. You don't? I don't. Because I know a lot of people online are going to be like, "Sure, that's dangerous because sure we get do. that when sure. we do Ouija boards. Oh, sure, sure. I don't. And I am not afraid. And I don't have negative experiences here at all. Yeah. I think fear is probably the most negative thing that can be manifest. And I think where there is fear, there is vulnerability for negativity to take advantage because you open yourself up when you become afraid and i'm just not fearful so no. then that parlays into my second question okay what since there's so much space in here what are like the top three or four most active areas you where think would we you should go hit? where do you want to go yeah i would go to the the carriage house mm -hmm. i would go here and i would go here Okay. <laughs> I, 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 maybe the library. Okay, yeah. The library would be a good place because you have a lot of people contributing, spiritually contributing to that. And also, those devices, boy, they draw energy. Oh, they bet. really draw a lot of energy. You're going to have, if there's anything to be attracted, the, the devices will, will attract. Yeah, that's where I would go. Here, the library and the carriage house. And you can do both of the uh, stories of the carriage house the same way. Um, Boss usually goes, travels up and down between the two levels. So if you don't find him in one level, you'll find him in the same place at the lower level. And what that is, as you go in, go to that far room, and in the corner, as you go through to the left, is where he hangs out. Awesome. He, he just and also he goes back and forth in the kitchen but I have the kitchen closed off I think but but he hangs out there in that corner I don't know what there is about that corner I don't know if it's a ley line or a water or a spring or something but something attracts him to that corner so I guess I have four questions this mm -hmm. one's shorter sure, no that's fine with all of the stuff that you have here and all the practices you do would you consider your just property to be like a big portal Yes. Oh, absolutely. Because it's really crazy. It feels absolutely. Like it. And I'll, to that point, we had um, we did a lot of a lot of dowsing, and what we discovered, and this is why I think Susie was spiritual. I don't think this was by accident. The house was built so that that the 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 first landing was the very center of a circle of places where those dowsing rods go together at a particular place of spiritual significance. Now, yes, it could be a spring, but do springs run in a perfect circle? I think not. 
No. I believe this house was built on a portal. I really do. And I believe the center of it runs right through that staircase. And I have seen doppelgangers on those particular marks Hmm. where there I've seen I've seen the uh, I've seen doppelgangers here. Of That's creepy. That I know. That creeps me out a lot. Yeah, I, you know, nothing happened. It, you know, it was kind of insignificant. You know, consequentially insignificant. But they just, I saw them. They were there. Mm. You know, my my daughter's seen them. Mm. <laughs> and then my last question that we ask everybody: yeah. So you would say this place is haunted? I would. Yeah. I would. I would say it was spiritually active. Spiritually um, active. Haunted, you know, that, that word kind of um, suggests negativity. And so I can't say that it's a negative venue. I, it, it, it's not a negative spiritual place. It's just so active. And in the, the, the understanding of balance, when something is balanced, it must have both negative and positive to maintain balance this is very balanced so you can you can come to your own conclusion with that awesome well i'm excited you know? <laughs> i think it's about time to start guys yeah, yes. yes. yeah? Well, you guys well, ready just enjoy yeah. enjoy i absolutely loved the interior of this house i mean it's knickknack and trinket heaven in this place but also there's some really interesting devices in there that she's using to communicate with the with the dead. Really cool artwork, but also this house has been decorated almost the same since her mother owned this property. And she says that her mother still haunts this place and her late husband still haunts it. The person who made these devices to speak with the dead. So it's obvious that this house holds many secrets. Wait, what the f*** was that? What? What? It stopped moving. <laughs> Dude. No way. Yo, what? <laughs> Dude, that thing was just moving like crazy. When we're getting, we're just getting B-roll right now. Yo, that is trippy. Dude, look at it. It's completely still now. Can you move that again? Really, really strongly? <gasps> Thank you. Wait. Yo, I have f***ing full body chills, bro. It's completely still now. Thank you. Yo, look at it, dude. What is that? There's no breeze right here. Okay, now what the hell? I thought this might be a vent or something. There, yeah, I mean, obviously there's no breeze. This is the middle of the hallway. We're just getting B-roll. There's our slider. Okay, that was trippy. Okay. Look, it's not moving at all. Yeah, it's not moving. And you said, can you do that again? Then? All the way, dude. What the hell, dude? Did you hear like a baby cry? And the dog barked right afterwards? Whoa! Yo, I'm not even kidding.
That sounded like a. This is the child's room. Dude, it sounded like me, and then the dog barked. And look at the thing's completely still. Yo, actually, WTF, dude? <laughs> That's crazy. What the freak, brother? Okay, if you're if you if there's any children in here, let me just ask. If there's any children in here, can you flicker those lights like you did earlier? I saw you flicker them. Do you know how to do that? Take the energy from those lights? Right before we came in this room, this battery completely drained. That's true. Dude, I'm tripped out looking at that thing. It's completely still. <laughs> it feels pretty heavy. That is just tripping me out, dude. Because look at that. Nothing. Literally, when we asked, it yeah. went all the way up like someone grabbed it. Dude, and it's completely still. <laughs> what, guys? I have never seen something like that. Okay. Well, let's finish getting B-roll, I guess. So, at this point, it was time to begin our investigation. And as you guys saw, Heidi and her husband, David, they had all of these spirit communication devices that they had researched and developed together. I had never personally seen anything quite like these devices, but... I was really, really curious as to how they worked, what the process was, and Heidi was talking to all of us and talking about how she is able to channel spirits and energies, um, kind of like a classic seance, using her voice to project what the spirits are trying to say. So obviously for our investigation that evening, we wanted to have Heidi do almost a small ceremony, a channeling experiment where we would have her use the actual device that David made for her before he passed away to see if we could bring somebody into the room to speak with us. And like I said, this is where it gets really, really shocking with some of the responses. This is where it gets emotional and just, yeah, this is a very different episode, but I think you guys are going to be really impressed by what we captured, but just a little bit creeped out beyond the usual creepiness of these videos. You're, you're about to see why. Okay guys, so it is December 2023. We're nearing the end of the year. Wow, what an incredible property this is. We're all just kind of in awe um, by the amount of stuff inside of the house. And it's really hard, once again, to convey the feeling of a place to people online. But this property is such a, a welcoming, just warm energy. And yet at the same time, it feels heavy in a different sense of the word. Heavy as in, I feel there's so much energy here. And I think she's totally spot on when Heidi is saying that this place is a, a gigantic portal because, I mean, just think about it. Almost every single room inside of the mansion has some sort of spiritual object or communication device. And they're doing these sessions all the time. She's doing these connections. Other people are doing them. They're doing workshops. It's just like... If there was a place that's going to be a portal, it would be this home. Um, it's also interesting to consider that she's had negative stuff come in and out of the house, which is interesting because it's that's the whole thing. When you try to channel, when you try to communicate, and you use these different tools or methods of communication, um, it's almost like casting out a fishing line. You don't know how big the fish is that you're going to catch. You don't know what type of fish it is. You just you're hoping to catch something. So tonight we're gonna do a little bit of a special start to our investigation with Heidi herself. We're all super excited, but I wanna show the other crew here. <laughs> Once again, the Motley crew. <laughs> I call being Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. Oh. Um, who else is in Motley crew? Vince. I'm Vince. <laughs> <laughs> You're Nikki Six. Yeah, Nikki Six. Nikki Six. I'll be Mick Mars, I guess, just on principle. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, you guys, what are you guys feeling right now? Uh, this place is, I mean, spectacular. Yeah. Uh, like she was saying about how there being a lot of energy in this place, she doesn't really get negative most of the time because she doesn't invite it in. It really does feel like a really happy like like nostalgic feeling in here um especially with i mean just her family members coming in and 
uh, just all the other owners of this place. I mean, it's a really, really interesting feeling in this place. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, really excited to be able to use some of the devices that uh, David made and mm -hmm. see if we can contact some of the spirits that maybe he used to talk to in this house. Yeah, that be? Yeah, I mean, pretty much what he said. And I mean, I think there's so many um, interesting objects in there that like David made and the reliefs that they have, uh, if it's extraterrestrial or a Middle Eastern culture, things like that, that are woven into their faith, if you will. So I think it's just got, like you said, like um, a mixture of, I think, good and evil but it's balanced and it's like she like you said she kind of doesn't focus on any of the evil or the bad spirits but they're there but i think it's definitely a really warm feeling for me in there for the most part it's yeah. like emotional yeah well that's what i said i could almost yeah, felt I, like i, I was gonna cry there's multiple time. times oh, like when, when we were walking around where i'm like kind of tearing up yeah you did stop, too stop. you didn't tell me that yeah okay because i'm a man yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Speaking of men. Okay. Speaking of men. Mary. Yeah. What? Something I don't know about. <laughs> Mary, are you excited? I am. How are you feeling? Um. What's the vibe? It's just so sweet and nurturing, and Heidi is awesome. She's just she's got this energy about her that's so nice and. Just, I'm excited. Just, it's so many cool areas. And the house is decorated so cool. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, I'm excited. Well, Thanks folks, All right. I think without further ado, we should head on into the mansion. Uh, uh huh. Let's do this, folks. All right. Knuckles in. Woohoo! That's good. Cool. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Love you. Let's do this tonight. Let's bring some, bring some love in with us, okay? All right. Yeah. Fill All ourselves right. with some love and light, yeah. some good Christmas energy. You got Christmas right. joy. Christmas joy. Holiday, holiday, holiday joy. Holiday joy. Holiday joy. Holiday joy. Okay. Woo. Okay. Woo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're so to start off our investigation tonight. We're all set up here in the library, and we're gonna have Heidi start off with her channeling because we wanna see if we can, you know, bring somebody in to speak with us this evening. But we're gonna let her kind of explain right now what she's about to do, kind of what the device that she's using. And look, somebody just walked over there yeah. on the proximity meter. Right when we started talking. Mm -hmm. I, I worked with my husband, um, with a particular device that is, it's actually very ancient. Uh, I think you'll find similar looking devices in um, historical artwork that depicts ancient spiritualism. I, that's just the lack of a better word. That's just all I know how to describe it, um, especially in the um, Egyptian and the Hindu religions um, or cultures. So what this is, I, I, it's not original, um, but I think the idea is not commonly known of. So if you can imagine what would be that this device is very much like a crystal radio, and it's using electromagnetic energy that is um, using the, uh, the electrical units of our bodies and copper. So if you combine copper as a um, electromagnetic conductor and you visualize uh, the Fibonacci sequencing for spiritual geometry and you imagine a spiral, you combine copper with specific rounds of spiral and you combine that with the energy of your hand there becomes a like a crystal radio and you're able the the um, idea is that you're able to then communicate with the elect the unseen electromagnetic energy of spiritual presence 
That could be anything from what we know of as paranormal. But in that larger umbrella of paranormal, it can mean um, any kind of extraterrestrial entities that may be coming in and out. Um, it can be ascended masters. It can be um, guides, spiritual guides. It can be angels. It can be ancestry. Um, those that have passed who, 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 who guide us. One would then say, could it be some, some malevolent? This has never been seen as being anything malevolent because when you begin to work with this, the greatest energy is intent. And when you have light intent or positive intent, there is more of a likelihood that the, the positive intent will attract positive um, guidance. So this is very much very similar to a experience that one might have in an out-of-body near-death experience. Certainly so not having to go through the neurological and the physical trauma of near-death. So what we're striving to do here is to be able to have a higher, an, an experience of higher consciousness that we might have in a near-death experience without the near-death experience. And those that have had near-death experiences seem to be at a higher level of sensitivity to this. So this particular device was made by my husband. We have a book on Amazon called um, a, um, Akashic Bridge for those who are afraid to cross. He explains all this um, and explains the history behind all of these. So this is a device that he made for me last Christmas before he uh, passed. And he, his passing was not an issue. We, we, we did not anticipate his passing. He may have known of that and not voiced it. But on Christmas, he gave this to me, and he said, this is a device I've made for you so that you can communicate with me after I'm gone. And, of course, I was very, um, it was a very bittersweet acceptance of this gift. Um, I didn't know what to think of it. Three months later, he passed unexpectedly. I'm going to use this to see what we can do, see who can come through. I, I feel very, very at peace with using this particular device that was designed to use for him exclusively because David was a very fundamental part of the um, paranormal investigations here. He was a part of this, he loved it. He hosted it, he, he welcomed it. And it would, I would think that he would be very um, happy to be a part of this event tonight. So that's why I feel very um, comfortable using his device that he made. So <clears throat> I, you know, not, nothing may happen. Uh, you never know. And I don't, I don't make any claims one way or the other. We just, we just do what we do and see what happens. So um, I'm going to start this and I'm, I'm not going to go through any kind of, any kind of protocol because I do that I mean, I can go ahead and do that within myself. If we were doing it in a group, we would have a protocol at the, that everybody would follow to be able to get into that meditative state. But I'm just going to do it as I do it. The instruction is just to hold your hands at a 45 degree, not touching the device, and um, meditate and just see what happens. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna put this right here. We're ready to go when you are. Okay. I'm just going to take some time. Go for it. Take my glasses off. Just take some time and...
I'm so glad you enjoy the home that we so diligently prepared. Thank you for coming tonight. We welcome you. We're glad to see your enjoyment. We put so much work, so much toil, financial contributions, and it was so hard sometimes. We didn't know how, how we would be able to afford to make this anything that would be valued. They were gonna tear it down. <laughs> oh, can you imagine that? <laughs> Imagine a majestic, beautiful piece of architecture like this being just thrown away like trash. I'm so happy that you honor it tonight. We appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What is your activity here? What are these mechanisms? We are just trying to see how much energy you have. I have plenty of energy. I woke up this morning, I had my breakfast, and I'm studying, and I have plenty of energy, thank you. What more energy do you need? You don't need to be in here. Um, we, yeah, we, they're just kind of, they're, they're used to show people who don't believe in this sort of a thing that you're actually here. I am here. I am here. All they have to do is just walk in and see me standing here. I'm here. Where are you right now? I'm in the corner where I study. Who is this? My name's Thorpe. I'm surprised you don't know me. I'm a very well-known man around town. If you do not know me, you may not belong in this town. <laughs> yeah, we've never... This is our first time here. Out of curiosity, what's your first name? James. You should know that. James, do you know anyone named Neil or Amy? No, I do not. Okay. Is James the only one that's here? Who, who was that that we just saw walking either in or out of the room? Is that you, James? Could be Susie. The device I have has told me he scares people. Someone that might be here. He scares people. It's probably me. Okay. I scare women and children. How, how long have you been here, James? A hundred years. Did you die on this property? I did. I died in this room. James, what do you see right now? 
I see interlopers. And I see mechanisms that don't belong here. They're you, not a part of my world. Are you angry that we brought these tools in here? Well, of course, wouldn't you be? They constantly bring in all sorts of paraphernalia that is useless. James, I'm curious to see if you can touch or move something in here. I mean, I know that you can. By the way, I want to introduce ourselves. My name's Colin. I'm Jeff. My name's Mary. My name's Connor. These people are all my family, <clears throat> my parents, brother-in-law. So we're just here to hang out. And you hang out together? We do. <laughs> but you can never get any work done. <laughs> we're working right now. This is kind of our <laughs> Well, this is certainly a type of work that I'm unfamiliar with. It doesn't involve books or writing or study. Art is folly. <laughs> My device that we communicate with you says true. So. What did you do for work? I was a lawyer. A very good one. Very good lawyer. James, I have a question. Since you live here, who's the one that scratches? That word just came up on one of our instruments. <clears throat> J.H. Randall. So he's an angry, angry guy? He scratched his whole life. That's all that man did was scratch. So my device that communicates with you says, the man attacks people. He does. He scratches everyone. He scratches through life. He scratches, scratches, scratches. The so, man knows no other action but violence, dismay, and hardship, and brutality. And he's... He likes to stick around the carriage house? As far away from me as possible. I don't let him in this room. Is there a reason why he's stuck around? He doesn't have anything better to do. He's still scratching. Do you know someone named Emily? That name sounds very familiar. I family name. Emily. And my device says right after says she scares me. Does Emily scare you? <laughs> Lots of women in my family scare me. <laughs> I thought you scared women. <laughs> Guess that could go both ways. A man can only do what he has to do to protect himself. Were you married? Oh yes. She scared me. She scared the hell out of me. She's a tough woman. Is she here with you now? No, she's over in the other side of the house where I keep her. Huh. Nag, 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 <laughs> nag, nag. You never could please that woman. Damn. It seems like there's more than just James here. Who's, who's standing there, James? It's Doug. Doug's here. And who's Doug? Yeah, Doug's that guy that bought that house. This house from us, for the family. Doug and Margaret, they bought it for my family here. My grandchildren, they couldn't... God, they were so glad to get rid of this place. <clears throat> It was an albatross to my family. All my hard work here, my books stashed and gone to ruin. Nobody cared about the work that I did here. We care. Yeah, I can tell you're here. You showed up. So do you do you enjoy the the new owners? They try, but I could sure do with a few less animals around here. <laughs>
They're destructive little critters. They don't belong in the house. So are the, the, the devices, the little instruments we have said, there's a lost soul here, an undocumented death, and that there are secrets. Do you know anything about that? I do. What happened? Prohibition. Was there a murder here? There was. <clears throat> Many. You know, we had an old wine cellar under the house, but my wife had it destroyed. It was covered up. Was there something in that cellar? Probably. You know, there was an old underground railroad that went from here to that hotel across the way over there. I'm sure it carried more than wine and liquor. So maybe there's the restless soul of a murder victim here? I would assume so. I don't know so, but I would assume so. There was a lot of... Oh, a lot of darkness in those times, you know? Mm-hmm. How come you stay around here? I love this place. I put hard work in this place. I can I can be anywhere and everywhere. How many spirits are here with you? Too numerous for me to count. It keeps Somebody here keeps telling us on all of our different devices that we need to be careful. Is that the, is the person in the doorway someone we need to be careful of? Well, there's great power in numbers and believe me, there are many numbers here. Numbers of souls. Is there a portal here? Yes. Yes, there is. Where is that portal? It's over the stream. The stream underground. So this whole house is a portal? I would assume so. The springs are all over this land. James, I would love for you to touch one of these lights in here for us. If you see the red lights that are everywhere, then you could do that for us. I will do so in my own time, but understand, I'm not a performer. Oh, there it Thank you. D. So you just hit the letter D. Who's that? What are you trying to spell out? James, a device again that we use that communicates with you says, I was killed. Would that be referred to Doug or to someone that you know? We have many here that were killed prior to the house being built. It was not within the house that the deaths occurred, but prior to the house being built. I would not want to be responsible for the blood money that we have built this house. No, this house is pure. Some of our devices have said, I was killed, sacrifice. Was there a reason that someone was murdered in here? That would have been long, long ago. Something which I know nothing of, nor did I live that. It's an interesting thought. The device also is spelling out D A. Wonder if David's coming in. Mm -hmm. David, I know that this is your device that you built. We're so thankful that you're letting us use it. Hello. <laughs> it's nice to be here. <laughs> oh. You'd never call me. Who is, who is 
is that? That's David. Yeah. Oh, David. Now, he was British. He was he was British born. And he was he loved Latin and he studied Latin and he was a smart oh he was a smart man. Oh he was smart. He was brilliant. David, that was really I'm so thankful that you just came in here. We could literally see that you came in here through some of our devices. So, David, um, our devices that are talking to us about you says the rack. The rack. And I know you like to use 3D printing a lot. Did you use like racks or anything like that to make them to display? Of course. Things? Okay. Of course. Did you enjoy? Making those? Of course. Yeah. You have so many interesting inventions. We're just amazed. Do you have a favorite one? The devices. The clock. David. Did they call you by a certain name or how'd they address you? Your children? I have no relations such as that other than Laurel, who was my stepdaughter that I really, really loved. David, we're here, we're here to do an experiment tonight. I think you'd be into this. Um, can you maybe try to move an object in here or tap on something, make some sort of a noise. We can give you a second. We're just gonna sit and try to listen. I think we heard maybe a tap. Can you try to do that one more time so we know that that wasn't just the house? David, one of our devices just came up with the name Amanda, do you know an Amanda? She has. She has investigated here. I remember her very well, yes. So you liked Amanda. She was pretty cool. Very pleasant. Where's the the most of the spiritual energy tonight? in the house what part of the home other than this room both both Who, who's that right there david there's been somebody watching us this whole time one of our devices even said it's watching you it's it's standing right there Is there a reason they won't come in here and talk? There's a line. What, what do you mean by that? They're lining up. Oh, they're all waiting to come in here. Is there anybody in this house that scares you, David? No. Do you like to be where Heidi is? Seems the bed's a little crowded. David, thank you for trying to spell out your name right there. It's actually pretty, pretty incredible that you're able to do that. Can you try to finish tapping out D-A-V-I-D on that device? You've already got D-A-V. You actually spelled out D-A-V already. 
That's it's an incredible really incredible. Start. Do you like to hang out in the bedroom library? I wasn't ready to leave her. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Aww, that's okay, David. I know Heidi really misses you and she talks so highly of you. We can just know you were an amazing soul. I ran out. Of life energy. It's amazing that you made this device to communicate with Heidi. It's really beautiful, actually. It really is. Communicating from the other side. It's just natural. Everybody has a, a time and a place where it, it happens. But at least you're still here. And we can't thank you enough for speaking with us. I appreciate the opportunity to do so. Thank you very much. B. David, what was your last name? Crook. Where did you come from, David? I was a bastard. I had to carry my mother's name. And for that, I never lived that down. David, I'm so glad you invented all these devices and this house really is wonderful and beautiful. Once again, we're trying to do a little experiment here. Can you try to manifest yourself in some way around this room? You remind me of someone. Watch. Scorpions. Scorpions all behind you. I move them often. We'll watch them. We'll watch them tonight. And see if anything is moved by the end of the night because if we could do this it could prove to some people that spirits are real do you ever get tempted to move on from this place there's no division of space where i am so david we're about to start our our investigation. Thanks for touching the light again. Yeah, thank you, David. You're welcome. It is my pleasure. What's your recommendation of where we should go next? Should we go upstairs? I think that's where we're going to head. Belfry. Belfry, okay. <laughs> Do you think we should go in the carriage house? Is that safe? Do you want safe? My no. son? Sure. Not necessarily. My son doesn't. <laughs> He's a daredevil and so is Connor. Safety is within your mind. Someone's standing right next to me. David? Who would that be? So David, our device again just said, bang. I don't know if you can make a bang for us or what that's mean. What I just said, bang. Do you know if we brought anybody into the house with us? I don't think so. That's good. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Oh. Someone's 
still standing there. It's like it coming in and out. Yeah. Who just walked in here? Can you tell me? I saw many things before I passed, and there are multiple creatures that peer through the door. I saw a tall extraterrestrial who is unseen in this realm. I saw my mother who stayed close to me until my passing. But presently there are still entities that like to observe and that's all they are They're just observers curious little observers well we have only we're going to start moving on to another part of the house is there any anything else you'd like to share with us no is there anything we can do for you no protect Heidi Heidi? Says me that she's here alone in the house, but she's a force of nature. She can handle it just fine. Is this still David? I notice the accent is gone. Who is this now? Who have we been talking to? understanding we were close so who are you because David seems to have left yes he has and I don't know if you know a Liam or not are you connected to a Liam not to my knowledge okay darker thing here the dogs we were told earlier that the dog starts to bark when the dark thing is around and there was a noticeable vibe shift all of a sudden it's cold it is cold all of a sudden the dogs it feels different in here but we've still like actually a little yeah. bit anxiety. Me too. Yeah. We've still never really gotten an idea though um, of who who well, you sometimes are. Sometimes when it's yeah. you know darker, what does one Do, tell you its name? Could you tell us who you are? Very cold. It's very cold where I am. Is he coming in? Z twice in a row again. What's the Z? Who's the Z? Whoever you are, our device again is saying there's an affair. Are you familiar with an affair? An affair of the heart, or we still don't know who it is. Okay. So, again, can we ask who you are? Because David's left, and you still haven't given us an answer. If you would, please. Yeah. It's 
secrecy. Can I ask you if you, is there an Anna here? That would be Margaret. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Margaret Annabelle Bracken Hook. <laughs> I do too. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> good. Who's so glad Anna? you came in for tea. Does anybody Simple need climate. anything to drink? I'll be happy to go in the kitchen. I have some coffee and I have some tea and I just made a nice a nice sponge cake. Would anybody like some of that? Sounds good. Oh, that, sure does. <laughs> that sounds Yeah, I love to give English teas here. Mm, that sounds amazing. I did a lot of them. I'm always here. Do you like it here? I love it here. Do you help Heidi? Nope. Oh. <laughs> How come? She does not need my help. No. I can't tell her anything. She <laughs> does not do what I tell her to do. <laughs> so, my device just said sin and gunshot, and we were just talking about secrets. Was someone murdered with a gun here? No. But if you look in that <clears throat> pane by the door, Heidi covered up a gunshot through that window. David didn't like it. So he had her to put that, those god-awful decals on the door to hide the gunshot through the bevel glass. Who shot the gun? Oh, some kids with their BB guns. Hmm, that's very disrespectful. Well, we are almost out of battery on a couple of our devices. Mm -hmm. So, I think we're gonna, we're gonna end, we're gonna, mm -hmm. don't wanna end it. they don't wanna end the session. Almost mm -hmm. Did you make it? Oh, oh God. Our way. The dog stopped. Yeah. The dogs, it seems like the dogs picked up on something negative. Right. Because it got really weird there for a second. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Physically, it was weird. Is there any way you could try as hard as you can to make a noise in this yep. room for us? Or but anywhere in the house? Darkness is collective sadness. The darkness you feel is collective sadness and grief. This place, as happy as it was, suffered a lot of grief and sadness and loss of loved ones. Is there I'm... something hiding in this house? Yes. What, yes. What is it? Or who is it? J. H. Randall. <laughs> Is he upstairs? He's everywhere. Should we be afraid of him? Not if you're smart. What should we do to protect ourselves from him? Outsmart him. Is there anything that he fears? Himself. So our device says, see my shadow. Do you think that's him saying that? 
Yes. May very well be, yes. Does he present as a shadow? Yes, a dark figure. You see him in the upstairs apartment often, looking out the window. Is he up there right now? Probably. So if we go up there, we might run into him right now? He moves between the front two rooms of the carriage house. And he's seen frequently. Oh! Shadow on here too. There, it came on there. It Look at this. It it's my happy place. I said see my shadow. Peering out the window. It's another way he has of hiding. Well, he hides within his own shadow. The shadow is his happy place in the shadow. Interesting. I think we're going to head upstairs now. I Oh, this camera oh, just shit. died right when I said that. Do you have another You're camera? supposed to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you saying you don't want us to leave? Welcome. I'm sorry to end this. It's such a pleasure being with you all. I'm glad I had an opportunity to speak through Heidi. We can't thank you enough. Is this still... Is this still Anne? Thank you for coming and for acknowledging Heidi's work here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming through and speaking with us. Feel free to follow us around. You may hear from me again. Margaret, Annabelle, Racket, Hoke. How will we know it's you, Margaret? Thank you. There is no other in here. Oh. Okay, we'll know it's you, Margaret. Can we ask to have Heidi back? How do you feel? Cold. I'm really cold. Oh. I'm really cold. A lot of energy coming, you know? But yeah, I'm that, good. it oh, got gosh. really cold. Did it get cold in yeah, here? It's yeah. cold. Is it just yeah. cold in here? No, it, it could be the temperature. I mean, honestly, it could be the temperature. Look at this. I'm beside you. <laughs> oh my gosh. What, what, what do you want to do now? What, yeah. What is your... Uh, now I think we're going to go up to the... the we're, we're supposed to go up yeah. yeah, that's what we were told to go do. I think David told us that. Mm. I think so. I can't remember. That was crazy. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before. But it seemed as if we were called up to the Belfry. And we wanted to check out to see what was up there and what wanted to talk to us. Look yeah. at this light. Look at this light just turned itself on. Can I come on? Can you get on? Oh, you're kidding me. Right when I started recording. Well, you recording, static, didn't you? That light just turned itself on. That was really weird. Did you guys see that? Yeah, I Jeez. mean, uh, it was crazy. just me and you up here at first. I mean, was that. It's, can you turn that light back off? That was...
was actually kind of freaky how it was flickering on and off. So Connor and I were up here just turning all these lights off just now. Connor did all these. I turned these off. Jesus. And right when I walked away, that one started turning back on and I got the tail end of it on this static. And then right when I started recording on that, it just turned back on. That was strange. That was really strange. That was so cool. And right when I just came up the stairs, it was like going bananas. Oh my God. Okay, at any point, if you're here with us, Turn that light back on to show us that you're here, okay? Look at, there's somebody standing over there. That thing just hit. Proximity meter by the lamp that was just flickering <coughs> and the music box. Okay guys, so we're upstairs right now in the top portion of the OP pile house. That music box has been going off more than it has the entire night. There you go. It's like somebody followed us up here. Um, the proximity meter went off by where the lamp was just flickering, but we're gonna try to talk to whoever's up here. Okay, whoever's here in the top portion of the house, we were told somebody's waiting for us. False. False. Hey. <laughs> hey. My hey. name is Joseph. My name is Joseph. Okay. Joseph? Who are you? Can you walk across the floor so you can... I can take your picture? David, are you up here with us? Intelligent. Oh, you know what? Mm. She was actually just telling me downstairs how intelligent. Oh yeah, she was David. saying that yeah, up here. Yeah, she was saying that up here. Wow, yeah. and downstairs mm -hmm. too. Okay. So that's kind of weird. Confirmation. Yeah. This is where like all of his things yeah. that he's right. made is up here. That's so maybe it's something. my happy place. Oh, oh my god. She oh, said this was it. like his yeah. his creation, even like up to the walls. That's so. Like this is like yeah. a spaceship. So maybe. Oh my god keep talking David David can you say your name for us and David I have a device here that you'd like it would show you in color on a thermal image if you would just show yourself relative if you would please relative oh D oh my god D. Okay, David, if that's you, can you continue to use this device like you did downstairs and spell your name? Can we also talk about how crazy that was that it said D A V? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what? That's Seriously. Just and weird. Heidi and I were talking about D A V. You'd have to go back and look, but maybe it was a transition period when it stopped. Mm -hmm. When she was I turning into was. a different yeah. person. Yeah. Right? Yep. So you have to, I, I think that's what happened. And then it went to the next spirit. Yeah. I see he didn't, wasn't able to finish. And I will say there was one creepy spirit that wouldn't tell us what its name was. You know, oh, whether yeah. she wants to admit to that or not. But sure. there was one that was like felt, and we all said it feels different in here. And that's when the dog started going crazy. Yeah, right? the dog was going fucking And then anywhere. It was like that guy went away and the dogs completely yeah, stopped. Right. I think it was a, you know, a mm -hmm. bad spirit for sure. Yeah. Oh. I feel lost. Did you, did you, did you just hear Aren't you seen? Oh, my oh my gosh, there was just a noise over in the corner back here. I heard that. Did you hear that? Uh -huh. Like a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Arch fiend outsmarting. I feel lost. Ghost box. What does that mean? Ghost box. No, oh. See. Yeah. Hello? Me. Maybe. Spirits walk. Oh. That, what did it say? Spirits walk. Okay, that, I just thought, I have to yeah. tell you that was on the floor here. Yeah. Uh huh. Like, okay, I could remember she said that 
she hears that one guy <gasps> walking over there, oh, like loud yeah. moves. Right. That's, what, that's what the I heard. The, I'm gonna point over here. That's the noise that came from here. Are you Bad entities here. <gasps> okay. Languidly. Languidly. See my shadow. <gasps> Shadow. Please show me yourself on here, and I'll see your shadow. Dude, this device spelled out by B Y E. That's cool. Do you think that was David saying goodbye, and somebody else coming in? <clears throat> I mean, I just know, from like know, what we got downstairs, of like, you said it was like a line of people just like waiting to come and talk and speak and so maybe like yes i can they're taking turns coming we're in. gathering <gasps> mm. we're gathering in line f is there somebody with whose name starts with f that just got here i'm having fun mm. okay f is for fun we are mm -hmm. too oh. what is it f is for fun oh What's your name? And where are you in here? It sounded like something over there. What was that scratching? Doesn't it sound like something scratching? Yeah. 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 Very. I think it's creaking a little bit or something back here from the wind or anything. Is that you scratching on the wall? Who's the scary thing that was around earlier? Who was the negative thing? We loved talking to David. Caroline. Caroline. Oh, oh my gosh, Caroline Kennedy. Did it say Timothy? Or did... Timothy. Oh, Timothy. I thought it said Kennedy. Caroline Timothy. The Kennedys are here. What the? They said FX. Mm, I like that channel. Whoever's up here, we need to have a distinct sign from you that you're here. Because it's really confusing. There's so many different spirits that are here. Just tell us one thing about you. Team Ed. Team Ed? Yeah. Twilight? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Is that you in the corner over there? <coughs> We're here. Okay, give us, show us. Shop. Shop. S-H-O-P. Could that be the oh. carriage house? Because she has a shop in there? Right. Like, go there. J. What was the guy's name? Yeah. J.H. J.H. I wrote it down. J.H.? Yeah. Jewelry. J.H. Um, Here. I got it too. Look at Jewelry. J. Um, Thorpe? J.H. Randall. J.H. Randall? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What was his first name? That is just J.H. Randall. Wait, uh, you should, dude, you should. Randall. You should. Look up. <laughs> I'm gonna text her right now. Why? Wow, what's the name of If it's Joseph, oh. we got Joseph twice. We didn't we even did. think about okay. it. Let's ask. Yeah. Or no, it was James. Oh. Alexander. This is a portal. I mean, so many Timothy, Austin, right. mm. Alexander. Well, also remember, she said like 600 oh. graves. Graves. Right. Yeah. This is my home. Okay. James, are you here? You probably would She's over there. Oh, okay. Bro. Nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> so you said nice to meet you. Who is this that we're speaking to? <clears throat> I'm not playing. Uh oh. We're serious, we just want to talk. We're not playing. <clears throat> These aren't toys. You know what might have happened? It's interesting. 
one of those spirits, I don't remember who, kind of seemed like they wanted to protect us. And they were the ones that kept telling us to come up here. And there was another thing that told us, go left, follow me, go down, that seemed like you wanted us. Library! <gasps> in the library. They were telling us in the library that we should follow them to the carriage house. But we listened to the good thing, maybe David, and up here it's pretty just calm. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what the spirit wanted. It knew that there was nothing really up here. No, that it was safe up here. It was safe up here, so they wanted us to come up and just hang out. And that dark thing is in the carriage house. J.H. Is Walk that left. Walk left. Yeah, left. Mm. Right after I said it was telling us to mm. go left. Is something dark? Sacred ground. Mm. Is there something dark waiting for us in the carriage house? The library, how we were talking about that. She was just showing you mm -hmm. David's urn in there. Mm -hmm. And her mom and dad are in there too. Yeah. I saw a picture of David. See my shadow. Again. Wow. Where are you? Was, is there something in the carriage house? Yeah. Should we go to the carriage house? Watch out here. Seems like it's warning us not to. Mm -hmm. That makes us want to go even more. I know. I, <laughs> I really, though, I felt like it was really heavy in the library. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't feel anything up here, no. really. I mean, it's got like a good kind of positive baseline energy, but yeah. unfortunately, when we do these investigations, the dark stuff tends to be the more powerful. Like she said, she even said that thing threw a man across the room yeah. in the carriage house. Wow. What do you have to say about that? Anything left to say before we head down there? Anything we should be watching out for, nervous of? I was sick. Oh. The kid. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Wait. scarlet Dude. fever. Groove. Hughes. Hughes. It actually just got kind of colder in here. Mm -hmm. Did somebody just come into the room? All right, well, we're going to go down to the carriage house. Agreed. <laughs> I'm so confused. I Didn't I just said agreed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, if you want to follow us down there, we're going to head down there. Okay. Heard something right behind me. So after the upstairs, I mean, we had stuff happening on and off throughout the night. I mean, the lamp flickering was absolutely crazy because Connor and I were just uh, setting stuff up and it turned on by itself and was doing that weird flickering. Um, There's some weird poltergeist activity earlier in the night with the tapestry moving by itself. Uh, it felt like somebody was there, but it felt like, once again, we needed to move locations to kind of chase this energy and it felt almost like jh the angry uh spirit that's been known to throw people across rooms it seemed like he wanted us to head out to the carriage house where he likes to hang out and yeah i think this i mean th this episode is just shocking there's no other way to cut it you're gonna see that what happened to us in there was unbelievably bizarre and validated multiple pieces of equipment that we have at the same time so yeah we're gonna cut to that now and buckle up this is about to blow y'all's minds okay guys so we're now back behind the op pile house you can see it right there we're about to go oh that light just turned on the, f the oh, motion light weird. in front of the house just turned on i think <laughs> right when i said i got that on this camera um so this is the carriage house behind us where the negative thing is. 
In the last 15 minutes, I've started to get angry and frustrated. I think I might be being affected by something. I'm a little bit nervous coming in here. Yeah, I'm gonna try to not let it affect me, but I'm definitely feeling fucking weird and annoyed. So, let's go. JH, here we are. in here we're coming in here to try talk to you first of all we were warned about coming in here can you if you are in here can you make a knocking noise or make some sort of a noise we want to know that you're here with us What 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 what? Oh, what 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 what? Oh, what 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 what? What is it? What was it? The knock. I was about to say, on this camera, it looked like right under Jeff's chin. Oh God! Like there was something like peeking out from behind That's that right. door. Oh God! Oh, I'm actually, I'm not even lying at all here at all. Not that I'm lying that, anytime, but I actually gonna say I feel anxiety like here. That came just from, that came from yeah. over there. <coughs> I'm telling you, I was. I don't know. Wow. And when, we, when we played this back, you can see like something just really small, like peeking out from behind that door. God. So past my chin. Yeah. JH, will you make another noise? The air is heavier up here. Wait, what did that say? I did bad things. He did do yeah. a lot of bad yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear that loud yeah. bang? Yeah, when, over here. It sounded like you below. Downstairs. Downstairs. I, I, I heard it this way. Oz man, I think you're kind of a. Uh... I did bad things. Something waits. Something. What are you waiting for? You trying to scare us? Hey, come up here. We're calling you out. Man, I don't think you're really as powerful as you say you are. The bench. Tradition. Wait and see. Red hair. I remember I said ginger earlier. Really. Okay, it's coming. He sounds like an angry dog. That's creepy. Bosman, are you coming in? Should we do DR60? Yeah. 
<clears throat> feels different in here. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Feels not very good. Way different than upstairs. Before we start this EVP session, we're going to sit here for a second and see if you can prove to us that you're a big scary guy. Let me ask, who's with us right now? Can you say your name? I was religious. I don't know. Why were you so violent with people? We like the dark. I'm just going to point this out. Right when it said I like the dark, a light turned off outside. Did anybody notice that? Yeah. Mm -mm. No. I just saw that house light turned off. Mm. Watch out for evil. So, boss man, what do you like to do to... Does he like to do stuff to women? Bad things to women? What do you do to women? Important. Do you want to hurt us? Who are you? We are apprehensive. Why are you making me feel angry? You upset for some reason? It's me. Hear me. So you are making me upset. Where are you right now? Nicholas. Boss man, did you turn the fan on here? God protects this place. Do you have to stay up here or can you go into the house? Can we do anything to help you? Nothing. Wow. That was so weird. Mm. The other night. Get right after you say no. It's also weird when you think about it how she said uh, that this guy, he moves like vertically mm -hmm. in the house, right. not like through rooms. I don't know. So it's like can't come like. through. Because that's like where we're hearing the noises too. It's like downstairs. Uh-huh. So he's ascending right now. Is that true? Are you here? Oh. We hear you like you're, you're mean to women, but how about men? Are you a weakling? Or what? Give me a sign that you're strong, if you think you are. It feels so weird in here. I know. Just kind of have less, like some anxiety for some reason. Yeah, that's what I said. I saw just a really creepy person walk silently out there. Well, that's creepy. Very creepy. Mary, you're, I mean, obviously he doesn't like women. 
maybe you should try to say something to that. Not antagonism, but... Boss man. Do you want to do something to me? Do women make you mad? Tired. Scratch. Mary's here. He doesn't do not like Mary. Look how tall it is. It's like, is it hanging? Oh, it's huge. Really tall. You got it? Yeah. Mary's right. Hold on. Do you feel anything, Mary? I mean, I think it's just cold and it's super creepy. Oh, God. I heard something over here. Look at how tall this thing is. Oh. Is she that, was saying it was dancing. Is that you? Look at that. Oh, can you feel anything? You're right in it. Who is that? I mean, strangely, oh. my hand feels tingly. Look at this. It's on your hand. Look at it. It's on her hand. Who is this? Sitting on... Why don't you sit on... Okay, it's smaller, though. What would that mean? What is that? Look, oh, oh, on the bed. Oh. On the bed. Okay, you're on the bed now. What's that, Mary? What? Okay. What? I don't know what, what to do. That? Oh, look at it. It went, it went on Mary's oh. arm. Oh, it's like attaching to you. Do you feel anything? I mean, I just feel cold. Oh. Okay. I guess. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's coming after us. Look at us down here. Oh. There it oh, goes. There it goes. Oh, that's cool. Well, somebody's here, that's cool. but. Two in this room in the corner. She said the left corner. That's over here. Let's do the let's do the Estes. It seemed in the carriage house that JH was there and he wanted to speak to us, but we just couldn't hear him. And so we decided to break out the Estes method. And this Estes method turned out to be one of the most shocking Estes methods that we have ever done on the history of this channel. Watch this. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching today's video. Hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful, spooky family. As you know, every single week here on the channel, we give away a free gift bag to one lucky viewer of the show. And this week to enter the contest, all you have to do is like today's video, let's smash that like button and comment that house is haunted in the comments section below. I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds to do this now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So go comment, you can comment multiple times. It helps the video so much. But anyways, let's get back to today's video. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. I love you guys so much and stay spooky. Holy moly. She will touch you. Okay, you ready for me to do this? Whoever's on that device. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna go into the Estes method. Okay. So. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You guys <laughs> ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, little girl just. Huh. Okay, so to whoever's here, we want to just ask first who are you? Here. Can you tell us your name? Bang, bang, bang. Me. Yeah, who are you? But yeah. It's me. What's your name? You know. Yours. It's like they don't want There's to a high us voice on a guy's voice. They like, do not want to tell us the name. Like Dawn when she was doing it too, when we kept saying, what's mm -hmm. your name? Can you just tell us the name of a spirit that's here? It said like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Are you the angry man? Tickle me. No. No, no, thank you. 
Yeah, who is this? Oh, it said, it just went like this. It, it said, bitch. Oh, somebody who's really angry. Why are you so angry? Can you tell us why you're so angry? Wrong. Like an angry dude. Wrong. Do Get you, her! Do you know who Heidi is? Yep. What did it said Peter. You know. He did? Yeah. Oh he my said gosh. Peter? That is. Wait, did Jeff say Peter? He said Peter. I think he said Peter. He said, who is this? And he said, Peter. What the f? He. Dude. That's weird. What the hell? What the f? That's wild. Is this Peter? Can you just tell us the name of a spirit that's here? Do Get you, her! Do you know who Heidi is? What did said Peter. You know. He did? Yeah. Oh he my said gosh. Peter? That is. Wait, did Jeff say Peter? He said Peter. It's me. Eh. Eh. Oh, it sounds like it's actually making. Like a sex sound. Oh. Oh. There's. I feel like there's something. That's really creepy. So who the fuck is Peter? Peter! Oh, God. Baby. Baby. No, it's like a guy. Baby. Oh, I think we've got like a creepy guy. <clears throat> Maybe this goes back to the beginning of the night with the undocumented death. Yeah. That there was right. like a murder. Right. Peter, were you murdered oh, oh. here? It said. It just said. Whore, whore. Gosh. Well, also remember there was like a speakeasy, like uh -huh. right, right here. Right. Let's party. Oh. <gasps> Maybe one of the speakeasy patrons. And I mean, honestly, a lot of speakeasies. That had, was fucked. I had Gosh. like. Prostitution and stuff like that too. Yeah. Uh huh. He was saying he was hearing like sex noises. Oh, that's and so horror. crazy with that's, Peter. That's weird. Naughty. Straight out. Naughty. Prostitution. I don't know what's going. On. There's just like. So, Peter, were you murdered or did you kill somebody? Possible, possible. Which one, though? Oh God! I can't believe that, Peter. That's weird. A that freaking headache. Do you like the girls around here? Give me up. Gave gave me up. Peter, were you a railroad man? Oh, I feel like a lot of anxiety for some reason. Peter, what's the sound? I'll knock you out. Sounds like a drunk. So he does sound like a drunk. Yeah. <clears throat> Peter, do you like to oh. do you like oh. to drink? P. Uh, a... Oh. Peter, do you like to drink? Maybe. Pork? Why are you here? March out. A voice, an angry one, that angry guy again. May I kicked out. Tell her to go. Elizabeth. So Peter, were you murdered? Dead. I'm dead. How did you die? Bang. Unknown. Unknown. Oh. That's what I just was saying too. He doesn't know how he died. Get me a bottle. Oh. oh. I think he is a drinker. So Peter. Black one. I like the black stuff. Mm. By the tree. What happened by the tree? I didn't make it.
with the bottle. I think it's definitely like someone who was going to that speakeasy. Yeah. Forced. They're not very nice. A woman's voice. <clears throat> were you murdered while you were drunk? Or let me ask Peter. Uh what was your oh last my gosh, memory? So many voices here. What's the last thing you remember? Died. Wooded. Something would wooded again. Double. Give me a double. So, were you murdered in the woods? Because in the other place they kept saying woods. Yeah. Shooting. And then bang. So. Shooting. You got shot. Do you know who murdered you? Run! I didn't. Did they chase Are you? Are you buried here somewhere? In the back. Oh. Oh my god, dude. I didn't even realize when I asked that question. Look. Bones was on the screen. Oh. Unknown bones. It's hidden. I'm it's hidden. hidden. God. Hey, I'm hidden. All those bodies. Remember, I was asking. There was. Uh, it, I got on my oh, screen. Oh, there's just like there's tons of voices hidden. in here. Yeah? Right. Oh, yeah, true. Where at? I'm, I'm outside. outside. Oh. Point it. Christmas. How can we find you outside? It's so cold. It just, I was it's about to say so... it got way colder, actually. Move over. Move it over. Turn the AC on. Yeah. It's yeah. Buy the pizza. You know how, like, you were saying. Demon. There was something. Oh. Demon. Dude, it actually got way colder yeah. in here. Just that I, demon, guys. Just looking into that room over there behind Jeff. Heaven. I almost just see I see more. Really? If you're here, can you just make Ooh, some sort of I noise to let us know? Ah! 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 What the fuck? Ah! What was that? Was that in there? That what was like that? Hot, cold, definitely. That's, that's what I was saying when I kept seeing stuff over there. Like, I feel like I saw a shadow. <gasps> I'm right here. Smile. Now the dog's oh, it's by the water. Oh my God. And then that she said all that water, you know. Is the streams. The, yeah, yes, the portal. the portal's the stream. Oh my God. Three. Oh. I've got so much. Water. Sound like a like just like someone smacked the f seriously like right Bats. behind my head. Yeah. My God, this is the creepy. Ooh, Some sort of I noise to let us know. Oh, oh, God, God, God. What the oh. fuck? Ooh, Some sort of I noise to let us know. Oh, God, God, God. What the oh. fuck? I give up. Don't give up. Is that tough? Is this? <laughs> <laughs> Gibberish. <laughs> okay, you said we just acknowledged that fucking slam. Yeah. That was oh boy. So. Also, fucking right after you said demon, you scared the shit out of me, dude. <laughs> I scared you. Know. My name no. is Mary. Oh. And he just said, "I need it." Mom, my name is Mary. Oh my god. Remember Doppelgangers too? <gasps> she said she sees Doppelgangers oh off camera. Gosh. I'm freezing cold in here. It is. It's so cold in here. Ice. And I've been oh. oh Jeff. And I've been like very comfortable pretty much the whole time I've been in here. Yeah. yeah. And out of nowhere. Bite me. Bite bite me. Delta. Oh, that doesn't make It's me. gotten a lot colder in the last five to oh. ten minutes. Who's the evil thing that came in here all of a sudden? White boy. <gasps> Elizabeth! <gasps> Who said Elizabeth? Did he say that during the Estes? I can't remember. Somebody when we were in here said Elizabeth. A voice, an angry one, that angry guy again. Man, kicked out. Tower to go. Elizabeth. So Peter, were you murdered? <gasps> Elizabeth! <gasps> Who said Elizabeth? I remember thinking... Yeah, I'm freaked out. 
Yeah. Beth. Beth. Ooh. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Oh my God. I came up the top. My home. My home. Remember, they used to rent this place out too. Mm -hmm. Knock until. I'm freezing cold mm -hmm. in here right now. Get going. Can you at least tell us, identify yourself? We haven't been able to tell who you are. Is this still? It's Anne. Is this still Peter? Oh, oh man. her mom. Her mom. It's Anne. Her name was wasn't it? I it's like a her Margaret. Name Margaret. Was Anne. Anne. A higher Margaret Anne. Margaret Anne. Higher woman's voice. Naughty, a woman's voice. Margaret. Oh well, yeah. Her mom was listening over there. Margaret, is that you? I don't think it's Margaret. I don't think it's Margaret. Oh, doppelganger trying to make us think. Yeah, she will harm you. Oh my gosh. Are you trying to make Freaky. us... Freaky! Are you trying to act like somebody that we don't think is going to harm us so that you can harm us? So that we trust you? Unfortunately. This has gotten very freaky at the yeah. very end. Two-timer. Sometimes there's like a wave of cold coming I know. right through here. Well, that's where that f***ing loud ass bang came from. A little laugh. He's just like, <laughs> like look, my, all my hair is running right now. You just said an evil laugh. What do you want from us? Like, what, what do you want us to do for you, dark thing? We're not afraid of you. Eat. Oh, it's cold. Eat you. Dude, I'm telling you, like, oh. my. These are even insulated Eat you? shoes, and my feet are freezing cold. Yeah. <sighs> Perfect. Go down. Go down. A woman's voice says, go down. I think we should go down out of here. Emily. You're ugly. Guy's voice. Oh. Maybe the mean guy. Yeah. Doesn't like so, is this crazy? I think maybe there's so many, so many questions on this, on this Estes. Usually we end with the Estes, but I think maybe we should go downstairs and do it. Peter, if possible. Peter again? Oh Peter God. again. He doesn't even know Pe that we got Peter on here, too. Peter's here. Oh, what? My name is Peter. I We just asked like fucking five minutes ago, too, if Peter's fucking here. Dude, it's so cold in here. It's freezing. Do you feel that? Yeah. Why would it be getting so much yeah, colder? Shiver me. <laughs> look, look over. Look over. Don't even dare look over there. <laughs> in the bedroom. Oh. I'm looking. I'm looking right over there. Jimmy. Oh. Are you over there in the bedroom? Just got a woman. I don't even know, but I can't put that on there. So what, she just said, you want to f***. Get out. Don't trip. Get out, don't trip. It's like, dude, oh. it's f***ing cold. The noise was him. <laughs> dude, now I'm, <laughs> you see dude, my I'm, goosebumps? Yeah. It's getting colder by the f***ing second in here. I guessed it. Here, you want me to take that? I'll take that one. Heat. Oh. Oh. Did you feel that? Yeah. That was on the floor. Peter, who's downstairs? We're going to go down and try to talk to whoever's down there. It's, it's... Is that where the evil guy is? Like a... Organ. Peep, peep, peep. Hurt. They gonna hurt us? Cold out. Okay, you peep. little boys. It's singing. Like some dude, like almost mocking. What do you want us to do? Oh, I don't know how I could say this. But it's just like, baby, <laughs> oh baby. 
but it just said baby. <laughs> <laughs> like a sexual thing. <laughs> I'm beside Pagan. you. Pagan. <laughs> Ooh. Remember how she said earlier off camera okay. she doesn't yeah. do Christmas, she does pagan stuff? Yes. Okay, Peter. Okay. Oh. Should I pull him out? Yes. Peter, Peter, we're gonna go downstairs. What's waiting for us down there? By the pop? I don't know. You get me a... Really? There is so many voices. Wow. That, that was, was crazy. Oh my god. Peter, that, there was like tons of stuff there. Wow. Dude, I don't know what I said, but that's how loud it is. People. Yeah. People sometimes will, you know, say like, you know, sometimes people will say, we get the Estes first, or, you know, the spirit, the spirit talker, talker first, first, and then the Estes. You, you said Peter first, and then the spirit talker said, my name's Peter. Really? Uh-huh. That's weird. So wait a second. Oh, yeah, well, it's like a door opened. So I said, well, we heard that yeah, I remember a really loud bang in yeah. there. I kind of felt something, you know, on my back, sure like movement. Yeah. It was so creepy. I'm ready to get also, out of here. There's like so many oh voices God. there, guys. I mean, so many things. And I got the feeling like it was more like, I don't know. Was some, I remember the sexual stuff. I don't know how you say that, but it was like a feeling of like dudes. Well, I was even saying, you know, like something came up and I said, I think this might be something going along with the speakeasy next door. Oh, yeah. That's and right. then you kept saying stuff that was like that would make 100% sense. made sense. That, that would make sense. <clears throat> like, I need a bottle. Hand me the bottle. Let's party. All right. I said that. Yeah. We said we're going to go downstairs and do a DR60 session before we leave. So let's go do that. All right. For the end of the night, we're going to come do a DR60 down here. Okay, Peter, you wanted us to come down. We came down. I'm starting this. Okay. Just stand up. Who's down here? Did you used to go to the speakeasy next door? Did you make that knock upstairs? Why were you trying to scare us? Who was the figure we caught on the camera that we used up there? What's your name? We were talking about unknown deaths and burials. Are you buried here on the property? Who's the person who banged on the wall behind me upstairs? Should we stay or should we leave? Can you say the name of the owner of this place for us since you live here? Um, oh. Wait, what? That was scratch. I'm like all oh, tingling. What the f Who's down here? Did you used to go to the speakeasy next door? Did you make that knock upstairs? Why were you trying to scare us?
is the person who banged on the wall behind me upstairs. Should we stay or should we leave? Can you say the name of the owner of this place for us? Does she live here? Heidi. Oh my gosh! Oh. It said Heidi. Oh, oh that's loud. Do yeah. it one more time. Oh. Let's hear it. Let's my do God. it. Oh my God. Oh, that was a good one. Heidi. Oh. That was good. Well, that was really good. All right, guys. Wow. We've been here for about, you know, we, well, we got here at four o'clock today. Let's okay. go in. Okay, everybody. Okay. Let's go. go wrap it up inside. Okay. Let's do our. This place is haunted. I think it's haunted by many spirits, and I don't think we'll ever figure out how many people are still haunting this place. With it being good, with it being evil, with it being kind of just neutral spirits in this place. Uh, I think this is one of the coolest locations that we've ever done. Amazing history of this place. Heidi, amazing woman, sweetest person ever. But I think we definitely came into contact with some very powerful spirits there. And I mean, it, it's definitely a place that I would love to go back to, to do a little bit digger deeping. Digger deeping? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> digger deeping. <laughs> <laughs> to do a little bit of deeper dig. <laughs> That's really funny. To do a little bit deeper digging onto what it is that is still in this place. But this place is definitely haunted. Wow, the OP Pile Mansion. What a crazy, beautiful location, first of all. I mean, the house is just so perfect inside. And when you really think about, I mean, not only the fact that Heidi thinks the home was built on a portal, but then you factor in the fact that there are all these spiritual objects inside of the home and actual devices that were designed there in the house to make contact with the other side. That all contributes to the haunting of a place and it's almost like the OP Pile House has a massive spiritual battery that can power this portal. That's why it seemed like we interacted with so many different spirits that night and, and we did. That's because they're all just coming through at all times, coming through all these different devices and portals and the, the history. I mean, it's just, it's shocking. But I mean, the mind blowing things that happened, the Estes with Jeff saying Peter, and then literally seconds later, the spirit talker saying, my name is Peter. You can't make that shit up. You can't program a spirit talker um, to say certain words. It literally is just like, Ooh, it gives me chills thinking about that because Jeff said that before the spirit talker so people can't say that we tried to copy you know so you could hear the the spirit talker in his headphones and then he said it it was before that and then the spirit talker said it so that's yeah that's absolutely crazy and then obviously everything else that happened um, the thing that stuck out to me was DAV being spelled on the actual device during the channeling session I mean how powerful is that so yeah, that, that proves to me that David was there with us in the room, and that's beautiful. That shows that he still wants to be with Heidi, his wife, even in the afterlife. And yeah, it's, it's just beautiful that we were able to film this episode coming into the holiday season that shows that love, family, uh, that never dies. The people that love you are always going to be around to love you. And life doesn't end when we end. And this whole thing just goes to show that those thoughts aren't crazy, they're actually true. So, yeah, we have a crazy episode coming next week uh, at the Hill House in Mineral Wells. That one is scary. This one was positive and a little bit freaky. Hill House has some of the freakiest evidence we've captured in a long time in it. So, yeah, buckle up because this Christmas we're getting dark. But yeah, thank you all for watching so much. We love you guys. We'll see you next week and stay spooky.
Hello. 